Hey you, Portal Map Maker, have you ever wanted your puzzle to not look like this? Well, introducing Hammer. You can just swipe away the old Puzzle Maker because today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the Big Bad Hammer program that every mapper seems to be afraid of. And you know what? By the end of this small, bite sized, few video long series, you're not going to feel so bad about using Hammer. I'm just going to go ahead and start teaching you the basics. So, first of all, you're going to select this tool right here. It looks like a tiny white square, and it's on the left side of the screen. This is going to be your brushwork tool. What this tool does is allows you to create geometry. Now, I'm going to search no draw. One word. Uh, select the one that's, that's just no draw. There's a few others. You might have less because I have a few mods installed, but... Just select no draw. This is what you are going to want to make the outside of your map with. Just this material in particular is great for optimizing spaces. And honestly, my OCD just triggers when someone doesn't use it on the outside of maps. Because no draw is a texture that's completely invisible. You can see through it to the void when in a map. Now, why you'd want this on the outside of your map is simply for optimization reasons and because it'll make your life a whole lot easier in Hammer. So, we have our uh, white box here, and you can just make it bigger or smaller. If you're wondering how I moved around on the 3D view, I just pressed Z and press Enter to make your brush solid. This is your first ever piece of geometry in Hammer. Are you proud yet? Well, you're about, you're about to be even more proud about what you're going to do, because you're going to want to make a room now. A lot of tutorials will start users off with the Make Hollow tool, which I generally don't respect. It's better to get the practice in making all the walls and have an independent structure without having to just use one group together object. So... We're just going to make some walls here for our little test chamber, and we're going to make a ceiling. Now, there's one problem here. The walls are yellow, and it's a bit boxy. So, let's start off with adding some more details to this room, just adding some more interesting geometry so it's not so boxy. And I'm going to add a corner like this. By now, you should already have gotten... Like, you should be able to use the geometry tool by now to make brushwork. It shouldn't be that big of an issue anymore. It's quite simple to nail down, really. Uh, and the next tool we're about to use is just as easy. So, this is the select tool. We can use this tool to select any object. It's on the left side of the screen and looks like an arrow pointing upwards. Just think about the stonks meme. So, we can just click anything and move what's selected so yeah we have room with independent selectable brushes now let's use the texture tool which looks like a multicolored cube right underneath the brush tool it's gonna look quite complicated at first but I can assure you it's rather simple how it works now as you can see we can select multiple s brushes like, if you want to select an entire object, you hold shift and control to just select multiple independent faces. Don't hit anything if you want to select just one face. So I'm going to select multiple faces of control and hit browse. I'm going to type black to find the black non-portable surfaces. Now, if you type white, you will be given the white portable surfaces, which you can fire portals on. You don't need to do anything extra special to the textures to make them so you can't shoot your portal gun onto it it'll the textures have built-in parameters set to tell if you can portal on them or not you won't have to worry about a thing on that one so now this air er this area is slightly bigger so we're going to want to use a bigger tile on it it appears to be misaligned let's type in some numbers to align it with the alignment tools on this texture selection screen 
Now, as you can see, after we put in the numbers, it is fully aligned, except for the little bit on top, but we'll worry about that in a few seconds. So, we're going, you see, it's, it's cut off at the top, uh, which is an issue because it looks awful. Like, don't do this in maps, please. What we're instead going to do is select every tall brush, and we're going to use the clipping tool, which looks like a brush getting murdered, with its yellow insides pouring out. It's near the bottom on the left. Now, as you can see, it's cutting all the brushes in half. Well, the problem is, part of it's red. If we hit enter, it's going to be deleted. So we're going to need to click the tool twice, so all of the brushwork is white still. And then we can hit enter. Once we hit enter, we will have all of our brushes cut into two pieces. So now we can texture all the bottom parts with the big brush and the top parts with the smaller tiles. So now we're going to align everything and make it look good and just hit all the textures and get everything good looking. Oh, I accidentally unselected it. Don't be worried if you make a mistake like that. Uh, mistakes are generally rather easy to correct. If it's something you can't immediately correct, you can always use uh, undo. Hammer does have options to undo things and redo things, like most software does, for which I am thankful for I make many mistakes in Hammer. Now as you can see this brush we're gonna need to use the clipping tool on it again because it doesn't look right. So let's do that and put that tile. Great! Now you have some walls in your test chamber with some proper tile alignment and now we're going to select the floor and give it a simple floor texture. It should be right next to a texture that has two aperture logos on it, which are just decorational items used in co-op. And we can just use the wall textures for the ceiling. Good job. You've just successfully made your first room and hammer with proper texturing, some varied geometry, and I need to fix this little tidbit right here. Uh, here we go. Okay, now we have a properly made room and a hammer. It has several details, nice areas, uh, interesting geometry, and yeah, making geometry in Hammer is really this easy. Most people immediately look at the software and think it's very complicated and hard to master, but nope, Hammer actually turns out to be easy. Now we're going to want to save our map using the file save, and give it a good name. Uh, how about we name this map PMAM test whatever, I don't know. If you're wondering, PMAM is just the acronym for the channel. This tutorial isn't over yet. In the next parts of this tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through the steps to create a map such as this. We've already gone over geometry, so I'll just skip over that and go immediately to entities and making the logic for your puzzles. Uh, so we're going to be making an auto portal map with a cube and button, plus a lab, two doors, and elevators, and the proper puzzle maker ints. What I mean by puzzle maker ints is an entity that allows workshop players to finish your map and be sent to the the screen for voting that's automatically placed on workshop maps. It's a little more work and hammer, but everything's a little more work and hammer. It's not that hard though. What you're going to find throughout this tutorial is everything is quite easy and the software is simple to use. Just remember to save constantly. You don't want to accidentally have the software crash on you. Hammer does indeed crash a lot. It's an unfortunate part of the software being from the 1990s. I think it was 1998 this program was made in. Well, that'll be it for today's video. Remember to like and subscribe, and the, if you have any, any questions about this series, the link to our Discord will be in the description. Have a good one.